Welcome to Let's Talk Sport and Sports Keyed. And yes, it's a bit of a different scene here. As Well, we, we're not always together, me and Connor. We do have other things to do. You know, we don't always hold hands, which, you know, I do miss out quite a lot. Uh, some some, some people do question our relationship status, but, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it private. Keep it private. <laughs> we could talk about it all day, but we do have a football match to talk about. And it is England versus Montenegro. They are travelling to Montenegro as we speak. It takes place on Monday night, and it's 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 been a great start for England. Let's not forget that 5-0 win over Czech Republic. And really, I know Czech Republic are not uh, as big as they used to be. They're, they're not the kind of opponents you'd be scared to go up against. But uh, a Raheem Sterling hat-trick was the uh, highlight of the night. And Conor Porter, I completely agree with your Instagram statement about how good he has been this season. He has been a game changer for Man City, but also on Friday night, he was for England. And it just shows with Gareth Southgate, with relying on these youth players, they are learning as they go and they are showing their best at such a young age. Yeah, at the, at the World Cup for Raheem Sterling, uh, you know, England were given a lot of praise, but Raheem Sterling was under the criticism really because he missed a lot of opportunities when he was through on goal, didn't score a goal in the whole tournament. Um, despite England making it to the, the semi-finals of the stages, but you know, ever since then, then for club and country, and he's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, five goals now in his last three games for England, um, including the hat trick uh, against uh, Czech Republic on Friday. Um, so he's he's really pushing on. Um, and you know, this this is from the same player that only scored twice in his first 45 caps. So it's really showing that you know now. Entering uh, at 24 years old, he's coming to age now, and he's starting to develop into this into this player that we all expected him to be when he left Liverpool for 50 million pounds uh, a couple of years ago for Manchester. So it, it's really nice to see him coming of age, and also for the the England squad overall, you know, is doing well as well. Uh, Sancho uh, setting up uh, a couple of the Raheem Sterling goals, and Kane's playing nicely as well. He's got some people to lay off to, so it's interesting to see how England keep on pushing forward, really under this uh, Gareth Southgate setup, which seems to always be adapted and uh, forever changing and uh, learning to cope no matter what is thrown at them. Um, especially when you looked at the injuries that they had in the midfield on the Friday as well, with Eric Dyer coming off the pitch halfway through the game. And you would have been thinking, oh, Dyer, at the summer, back in the summer, you would have been thinking, oh, Dyer's gone off, you know, uh, it could be Dyer's a disaster Dyer. now. It could be a disaster for England now, uh, but then when you got someone like Declan Rice just waiting in the ring, wait, waiting in the wings, you know, it, it's it's looking like a bright future really for England pushing forward. Isn't it funny how young players is 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 the uh, scene at the moment for England, where you know we we don't have to. It's not like a few years ago when Frank Lampard or Stephen Gerrard would be on the cusp of retirement, and then everyone thought, well, where do we go next? Because the golden generation from the two uh, thousands didn't work. Who the hell do we look at now? But Gareth Southgate, with him being in that youth setup beforehand, um, I know this is probably a bit irrelevant, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer trying some youth plays at Man United as well. It just shows, you know, you don't have to, you know, you can work with the players in front of you and with England as well, Connor. There's no real pressure on them, but they're they're playing like it's like there's no pressure on them at all. It's I don't know how to express more about it, but it's just. It's just fantastic to see. I've not seen an England side like that since I've been following football. I think the thing that's helped it out the most is the likes of Sancho and potentially in the next couple of months will be hudson Adoy are looking to take opportunities as quickly as they can to get into first-team football at the highest level possible. You know, Sancho, it was a big risk for him to go to Dortmund to to chase that first-team football, but he ended up getting the opportunity. And now, you know, at 19 years old, he's already in the England squad. hudson Adoy made his debut, of course, against the Czech Republic uh, this past Friday, and he's been tipped to go yeah. away to Germany, to Bayern Munich, and to other European giants for now for the past couple of months. So it's really nice to see these England players developing through, coming into the England squad um, at a relatively young age, because then now it shows that potentially the team chemistry can build moving forward and, we can look at, you know, the the World Cup last year as a building block towards a foundation, really, towards future England success. You know, let's see how we get on to the home nations, not asking for a home nations win. But, you know, I would expect I would expect England to, to, to progress further uh, than ever before at the European uh, European Championships uh, next summer. Um, 
we we look back at 1996 and the European final, semi-final finish then, um, hopefully be able to replicate that kind of success because I think the squad's even stronger than that one, um, especially with you know with Rice coming through now, looking like potentially he could take Dyer's spot if Dyer is injured and out for some time. You know, Rice not, not might not let up that spot against Montenegro. He might have a hell of a game, and uh, I think I think that's what we've got a lot to look forward to as England fans really with this England squad. Do you think? Do you think all these young England players performing for our national team sends an alarm to the big clubs in in England to kind of look go? You don't have to look abroad. It's under your nose. We the players are there. I think most definitely. I think um, I think City is one of the the one the main teams that have taken you know the 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 bite of the bullet really and the, the bullet to the foot when it comes to to their. Uh, players, yeah. especially in Sancho's case, because you've seen I, how he's developed that. in that. You know, he was at he was at City uh, for a relative number of years, and he played at Watford before that. But uh, I think the Watford City move happened during his youth, so you know, it's it was kind of one of those youth movements and things like that. Um, but but certainly letting him in go to Dortmund was a big mistake, and I think Chelsea could take some lessons from that and to their own situations with Hudson Odoi and not allow him to leave. And I think that's one of the reasons why Phil Foden's not been allowed to leave either because he's been so highly tipped to be in the England squad in the future. I think, you know, if uh, if Foden was playing regular European football, um, he potentially could be in the, in the England squad right now and or sitting on the bench at the very least because he is a talented player and we've seen that from when he plays. So, you know, there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of hope really uh, for English football in the future and um, we'll, we'll certainly be keeping our eyes out on it, um, especially with this upcoming game against Montenegro. The only questions that I have really is maybe a little bit of an issue in defence. You know, centre back partnerships have always been a bit of an iffy one for England. Um, you know, Harry Maguire is looking fantastic, and Michael Keane looked great against uh, the Czech Republic on Friday. Um, but we're looking, still looking for a little bit more depth. I think maybe just because. You know, Joe Gomez and John Stones went in the England squad because of injuries. I think that might be the reason why I'm so un- unsure about it at the moment. But I think we'll have to wait and see really until the summer to, to, to really give it a proper assessment as to what the situation is in the defence. Because I think everywhere else is is pretty much sorted in terms of depth of quality. Um, it's just a case of, you know, Southgate making the difficult decision of deciding who starts every week. <laughs> he probably has to speak to Wackham Lowe. When he's yeah. the manager of Germany and Deschamps from France, thinking, "What do I do? Yeah. They're too yeah. good." Not let's so not good let's, let's not forget as well. You know, we've got plenty of other forwards like Rashford waiting to get their opportunity back into the team as well. Yeah. You know, it's such a selection dilemma. I feel a bit of sympathy really for Gareth Southgate, but you know, then again. <laughs> but and, in all and, fairness, we we've had good teams in the past and it never worked out. So mm. I'm sure from that he can learn that we we need to do this right. I think the only position really that he doesn't have a lot of selection in, in the defence is um, is left back. I think he's pretty much solid on Chilwell, and I think Chilwell's in that spot. Um, I'm not too sure about right back because Kyle Walker hasn't been that great really recently. No. Um, and I think if Trent Alexander Arnold was fit, I think he would be in the team. Um, oh, but, easily, easily. But, but yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see really. And let's talk about their opponents then, Montenegro. Uh, not Serbia, Montenegro. I sound like I'm back in 2006 when they, of course, split up. But, uh, you know, they're not having a referendum while we are. Uh, anyway, uh, we don't do politics on there. Let's talk sport. But, you know, Montenegro, they're, in the past, in the last few years, they've actually been one of those teams where they're in it, but not to win it. But they do surprise some of us. Um, obviously, a few years ago, they were competing against us in the group stages for either the World Cup or the last Euros. And they were top for a majority and competing till the very end. And then England start to break away from everyone. But, you know, this team, uh, away from home as well, going going to Montenegro, Gav Southgate knows on paper we should win, but this is one of the teams that could be our hardest out of the lot. Yeah, out of the last four times that England have played against Montenegro, they've only won once. They've drawn the last couple of times as well. Um, if you think, uh, I had a great podcast, I think it was the Football Daily from the BBC, uh, I can't 
I can't give the credit to who was that said it, but um, if you think about how England played against Scotland at Murray Field not too long ago, you know, the atmosphere was built up by the rivalry and things like that. It's a completely different atmosphere, really, in Montenegro. The pitch is, is, is really close to the fans. The fans are really close to the pitch. It's really tightly knit. And, you know, you get these ultras that you do get in the, uh, the European countries coming towards uh, coming along for the games. And, you know, it's going to be a tough test. But Montenegro are with... Uh, without uh, Jokovic, who, of course, um, used to play for Manchester City. Um, he got injured uh, during the, the game against Bulgaria, the 1-1 draw um, on the Mon- on the Friday night. Sorry. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how they're able to cope without him. Uh, Savic, though, Savic, another former uh, Manchester City player. I think he was um, missed the Bulgaria game with a hamstring issue. He should be back for Montenegro in this game. So they'll have a bolster up in their defence a little bit, but it might be a, a, a case of an issue as to, to where the goals come from for Montenegro. Because, um, of course, they're missing their top goal scorer uh, in the squad at the moment in the uh, in the uh, the former Manchester City striker. I think it's at Monaco at the moment. Not I think you're right. Sure. I think you're right. Don't confirm me on that at all. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it'll, it'll be a... It'll, it'll be a tough test, really, nevertheless, because um, Montenegro has been a, a tough place for England to go to uh, in the past. So we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see really how, how they react. I think with the, with the expectation of what we've had over the summer and what we've had in the Nations League as well, you know, getting a good result away at Spain, I think anything less than a win might be a bit of a disappointment really for this England squad at the moment. Um, it's all about this, getting that run going, isn't it? Yeah, the history says draw potentially, um, and I think I think Southgate would be satisfied with a draw, but I don't think the media would let him off no. with a draw. Um, but you know, in these early stages of the, the European qualification, I think I think a draw would be fine. Um, but I would expect this England squad to win, especially with the talent that they've got right now. I, I think in the past I'd kind of agree with you after what happened in Euro 2016 and, you know, how we couldn't even beat Iceland. But, yeah, I, I have to say an England win for me. Uh, Montenegro were quite close the other night against Bulgaria. They they were eight minutes away from beating them away from home. They ended up taking a point instead. Those three points could have been really important for Montenegro um, in terms of this qualification. But uh, I think for me, we're going to go to the predictions now and I'm going to go for a 3-0 win for England, which is, OK, it's a bit one-sided in terms of score line but I think it could be a, a very hard fought first half but I think England will be able to play the 90 minutes while Montenegro might get a little tired I think as well I think England should be able to win this game I'm going to go for a 2-0 though I think Montenegro will have that home advantage behind them hopefully the fans will be there to support them despite the loss of their captain in Jokovic uh, Savic though coming back into the defence should keep them strong um, and you know he's got that experience as well to hopefully solidify the defence a little bit more and to keep the likes of Sancho and Sterling and Kane out and potentially Rashford or Hudson Odoi if they're featured. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I'm expecting a little bit of rotation, so we might not see the same kind of flair and, um, and chemistry and fluidity that we saw on Friday night. So I'm going to go for a 2-0 win for England in this one. 